Abigail, the woman that changed the life of King David. I am God! You are not! <laughs> Destiny helpers are people by the mere power of their presence can alter the course of your life. Such was the case for David when he met an extraordinary woman that changed his life. This story takes place after David experienced the loss of his mentor, Samuel, as described in 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. Following Samuel's passing, David departed and journeyed to the wilderness of Parana. It was in the course of this journey that he met the woman that God used to single-handedly stop him from self-destruction and redirected his gaze towards his destiny of becoming the king of Israel. Who is this extraordinary woman that changed everything, not only for David, but for generations of Israelites, and indeed for humanity? What did she do? And what was the consequences of her actions, both for her and for David, who later became a king? The story is narrated in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25. According to the passage of the Bible, there lived a wealthy man named Nabal, whose business thrived in the town of Carmel. He owned 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, plenty slave laborers, and other valuable properties. However, Nabal was not a very good man. In fact, his name, Nabal, is reflective of his character. He was harsh and wicked in his dealings with other people. Yet he was married to a beautiful, kind, gentle, and intelligent woman named Abigail. This pairing almost reminds of the story of Beauty and the Beast. Only this beast was beyond taming. Although Nabal possessed great wealth, he was poor in spirit and miserable in living. His excessive focus on material possessions was the bane of his existence. Even during the sheep shearing or harvest season, a time of common hospitality and feasting, Nabal did not show any form of generosity. In contrast to her husband, Abigail was generous and beloved by all. The Bible speaks well of Abigail, equating her beauty with that of only two other women, Rachel and Esther. One might wonder how a man like Nabal could have ever won the heart of a remarkable woman like that. Not far from where Nabal had his farm and tend to his flock, David had his camp with his men. One day, as narrated in the book of 1 Samuel 25, 4-9, news reached David in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, that is harvesting. David sent ten young men with this message, go to Carmel, Find Nabal and greet him on my behalf. Extend to him my wishes for a long life, peace to him, his household, and all his possessions. I have heard that his shepherds, who have been with us, were not harmed and nothing was missing while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will confirm this. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes and be treated well, for we have arrived on a joyous occasion. Please share whatever provisions you have at hand with your servants and with your son David. David and his men have been voluntarily protecting Nabal workers and his flock. They thought Nabal would at least show appreciation for their good-natured service to him, as it is customary for that harvest time of the year. David's young men delivered the message to Nabal as instructed. It is important to note that this proposition from David was not a form of extortion or a protection racket, as it may sound to modern ears. Instead, it was a request for fair compensation for the valuable services David had provided in safeguarding Nabal's flocks when they were vulnerable to Philistine raids. It is worth noting that Nabal was in the process of shearing his sheep, indicating that David had chosen an appropriate time to request payment for his services. David had protected Nabal's shepherds and flocks for a considerable period, yet he did not expect compensation until Nabal himself had profited from the harvest. In a manner respectful of the customs surrounding harvest and sheep shearing, David presented an offer to Nabal. He did not impose a specific contribution or set a price. Instead, he left it to Nabal's generosity. However, Nabal responded disrespectfully, questioned David's identity, and dismissed him as insignificant. He said, as paraphrased here, Who is David, the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away from their masters. Why should I give my provisions to unknown men? It is clear that Nabal was well aware of David's reputation throughout Israel, making his insult a deliberate act. 
Nabal, fully cognizant of David's identity, chose not to acknowledge him. Nabal's choice of language reflected a common sentiment in today's society, when people ask, who does he think he is? Nabal continued to belittle David by falsely accusing him of being a disobedient servant. Nabal's stinginess and lack of empathy were on full display. When David's men returned from Nabal and relayed his insulting message, David was livid. As narrated in the book of 1 Samuel 25 verse 13, David responded by instructing his men to put on their swords and get ready for battle. He too armed himself, and approximately 400 men joined him in preparation to confront Nabal. He was ready for a fight. Yet, this was not a shining moment for David. His response did not align with how the Lord would have wanted him to handle insults or even an attack. God calls us to bear insults with love and kindness, responding to evil with good. Walking in the high ground of love and kindness is what is expected. Approximately 400 men accompanied David. His intention was not merely to make a statement to Nabal, but to wipe him out. However, one of Nabal's servants heard of the impending disaster and approached Abigail to inform her of what had happened. The young man warned Abigail of the impending calamity that was planned against their master and his household. It was evident to the servants that David would not going to tolerate such an insult without a fight. They urgently requested Abigail to take action not only for their sake, but also for the sake of their household. They described Nabal as a scoundrel, emphasizing the futility of engaging in reasonable conversation with him. This explains why they didn't hesitate to make an urgent appeal to Abigail, realizing it was a matter of life or death. Abigail acted swiftly, demonstrating her wisdom and judgment. She recognized the urgency of the situation and wasted no time in making preparations. She gathered 200 loaves of bread, two jugs of wine, five sheep already prepared for roasting, five measures of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs. After the items were loaded onto donkeys, she instructed her servants to go ahead of her, assuring them that she would follow. It is important to note that she did not disclose her actions to her husband. She knew that she would have been unable to convince him, as Abigail rode on her donkey. But as she was going through the hidden part of the mountain, she unexpectedly encountered David and his men, who apparently were coming to attack her husband. As Abigail caught sight of David, she hastened to dismount from her donkey and prostrated herself before him, kneeling with her face to the ground in a show of deep respect. With humility, she addressed him, acknowledging her role in the matter and requesting his attention to hear her words. She pleaded with David not to pay heed to Nabal, emphasizing that his name accurately reflected his foolish and senseless nature. She explained that she had not seen the young men sent by David. She pleaded with David that it was the Lord that had prevented him from taking vengeance with his own hand. She urged him to allow divine justice to reign in the life of his enemies and those seeking to harm him. Presenting the gifts she had brought, Abigail tactfully requested that they be given to David's accompanying men. She sought forgiveness for any transgressions and assured David that the Lord would establish for him a secure and enduring house, recognizing his role as a warrior fighting the battles of the Lord. Abigail reminded of God's promise to David and encouraged him to be steadfast in that promise. David, already in a state of anxiety and irritation, was taken aback by this sudden appearance of a lavish entourage and a graceful woman bowing before him. The sight compelled him and his entire company to halt their journey immediately. Abigail certainly knew how to command attention, even from would-be king of Israel. Abigail's appeal to David was masterful and instrumental in averting a disaster, both for her husband and for David, who would have offended God by his action of vengeance. However, there are those who say she also made some mistakes in the encounter. First, she openly criticized Nabal, her husband before David, referring to him as a scoundrel. Such harsh criticism is not fitting for a wife to speak of her husband, just as a husband should not speak ill of his wife. The second criticism is that Abigail seemed to have made herself available to David for future consideration, which may have been inappropriate given the circumstances. However, the most important point to note is that through her quick thinking and promptness of action, Abigail stopped a raging madness between two men that could have led to many deaths. 
Abigail's wise words served as a poignant reminder for David, evoking memories of a time when he had wholeheartedly trusted God for victory, slaying Goliath with a stone and a sling. Through her insightful appeal, Abigail redirected David's focus from the bow to the Lord. What made Abigail's plea truly magnificent was its uplifting nature. Rather than tearing David down, she exalted him, emphasizing his glorious calling, destiny, and overall integrity. Abigail simply urged him to consider whether his actions aligned with his future and character. David, acknowledging the truth in her words, blessed the Lord for sending her and commended her discretion and wisdom. He recognized that she had prevented him from shedding blood and seeking revenge with his own hands. Through her bold, swift, and wise appeal, Abigail halted David's descent into sin. Abigail's appeal was not only compelling but practical as well. She promptly settled the debt owed to David, ensuring that he received what was rightfully his. When Abigail arrived back home, Nabal was having a grand feast and was completely intoxicated. She wisely chose to withhold her message until the morning, when Nabal's disposition had sobered. When she finally informed him of the situation, his heart sank with uncontrollable rage, and he was instantly struck with paralysis. Shortly thereafter, he died. No one is beyond the reach of God's justice, and when the appointed time comes, he executes his judgment. When news reached David of Nabal's death, he praised the Lord for vindicating him and sparing him from seeking revenge. In response, David sent a message to Abigail, expressing his desire to make her his wife. When David's servants approached Abigail in Carmel with the proposal, she humbly bowed with her face to the ground and replied that she was ready to serve even as a humble maid and wash the feet of David's servants. Abigail promptly prepared herself and rode on a donkey, accompanied by five of her attendants. Soon after, she became David's wife. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. Let us know what you think of this topic in the comments section. God bless you.